I lead the Public and Performative Interaction Group here in the School of Computing Science at the University of Glasgow. And our work is concerned with bringing novel technologies to public spaces and looking at how people interact with them naturally in those spaces. One of the things about using technology in public is that other people are going to be watching you. And that changes how you interact with technology. It turns this interaction into a kind of performance. So we can take that performative aspect and create a really compelling experience based on the fact that people are going to be watching you. I'm also really concerned with play in public spaces and how technology can have a playful nature to it. So how can we actually encourage adults specifically to play with something in a public space, explore how it works, and share that experience with others? Technology is all around us. It's everywhere. We see it on our buildings, on billboards, on public displays. But I always wonder, when, at what point do we go too far? And does technology actually start have, having a negative impact on a public space? What kind of value is a display like this adding to a public space? Does it create a positive experience? How could we maybe take control of these displays and create something that's actually positive? Create something that encourages people to play? If we look to digital interactive art, there are numerous examples of different ways that people are just creating experiences that exist for the purpose of cultural exchange, to put a smile on someone's face, to create something that people can share with each other. So with the Public and Performative Interaction Group, we wanted to play with this idea of digital interactive art that has the sole purpose of being playful, of getting people out of their shells, and having something that people can experience together. So to explore this concept, we organized this two-day micro-residency a sort of hackathon for digital interactive art. So I'm a computing scientist, but I teamed up with Glasgow-based artist Audrey O'Brien, who's a recent graduate from the Glasgow School of Art with uh, fine arts photography, and we organized a two-day micro-residency. And the format of the workshop was this, that we would bring together a diverse group of people, and over the span of two days, we had to make something that physically worked, something that we could deploy by the end of these two days, which is where the hackathon element comes in. So we had to develop the concept, find a deployment site, and actually make the thing work, make it run. So the first part of getting this off the ground was to determine a site. We brought our workshop team together, and we kind of wandered around the Glasgow University campus, and we found this space, which you might recognize as being under the Boydor building. It's a dark space, it's quite derelict, at night it's very poorly lit, and it's a kind of slightly abandoned space on our campus. It's not a very lovely space to go through, and people tend to avoid it. There's graffiti, there's trash, it's, as I say, poorly lit, there's lots of rubbish everywhere. And we thought, is there a way that we can kind of change this space? Can we reappropriate it? Can we take it over with music and light and interaction? And something about this space as well, you'll notice the walls are painted black. Um, it felt very theatrical to us, and we thought, there's something we can do with this space. It has a nice feeling, it's just been abandoned. How can we change it and use this performative interaction idea to really change how people perceive this space? So what we needed to do was change our own perceptions of this space. We wanted to abandon everything that we assumed about this space and completely change our thoughts about it. So we brought all of the workshop participants to this space and we completed a number of kind of exploration exercises to completely change how we viewed, about, how we viewed this space and what we thought about it. So one of the things that we did was we took these small mirrors and we wandered around the space but looked only at the space through the mirror. We looked at all the corners, we looked at all the angles that we wouldn't have otherwise seen, and it was actually quite disorienting. We noticed really different things about the space that we would never have thought of if we just walked through it normally. We wanted to completely upend all of our assumptions about this space, and this was one of the exercises we did. But we also wanted to bring a little bit of joy to this space and try to change it and brighten it up a little bit. So we actually took these pieces of chalk and we scrawled over all of the surfaces, we drew our footprints around the space, we scribbled on the pillars and the sides and the ground, and we wanted to just see, can we take control of this space a little bit, make it our own, add a few things. We wanted to make it a bit more playful and not this derelict, dark space that it had been previously. So we took the chalk and we drew all over everything and People thought we might have been a little bit mad, but we were there, we were taking control of the space. But one of the important things as well is we wanted to know what the space was like, what the sounds of the space were like, what kind of sounds might we think to bring in. So we actually all stood in the space and listened for two minutes of silence, standing around each other. What were the sounds that we could hear? The pigeons, the wind blowing, the cheerful conversations happening in the walkway above, the buzz, kind of very poor lights in the space. We wanted to listen to what are the sounds here, because what are we going to bring? How are we going to change this? 
But again, following the theme from wanting to really change things and change our perceptions, we also walked through the space listening to a variety of different sounds that we could then block out the existing sounds with. So we listened to this kind of carnival music and deep piano music just to change the way that we were looking at this space. And again, completely blocking out the existing audioscape meant that we noticed different things, different visual things, different nooks and crannies in the space. So after having a chance to really explore the space, we were really set on trying to change this space, trying to fill it with light and music and interaction, conversation, and actually draw people down to this space, which is typically avoided on the campus. So the format of the workshop was that basically we took our group of people and we locked ourselves in this room for two days to try to develop the concept, make it work, and then actually deploy it in our pop-up exhibit that was at the end of the workshop. The team was pretty diverse. We had artists, designers, computing scientists, interaction designers, and a writer that all came together to kind of work together for this project. And one of the things that we first started gravitating around was this idea of touch as an input technique. And touch is really interesting. It's a very powerful sense, and it's something that we can share with others, but it's also something that has this kind of sense of permission. Am I allowed to go up and touch this? It requires people to kind of get out of their comfort zone a little bit and actually approach something and put their hands out and touch it. And we had a number of capacitive technologies that we were using that we had available in the workshop um, to explore how we could capture touch and how we could get people to touch things together. We had these capacitive, um, these conductive threads and we started with the idea of kind of hanging these threads around our workshop space and playing with how people might walk through the threads, how they might touch them, how multiple activations might lead to some kind of interaction. Um, and the idea started to really develop these hanging threads. As the, develop, as the idea um, developed, we got the idea of more bringing it towards a pendulum. And what we had to hand in our workshop space was left over from lunch, which was this banana. And if you've played with the Makey Makey set, then you'll know that bananas are conductive, and these served as the kind of weight for our pendulums. And pendulums have a really nice affordance because if you grab them, you can swing them, you can see the effect of your input, and it had a nice kind of way that we could display the threads and people could see where they were, display all these interactive threads. So as the pendulum concept became more and more developed, we were ready to actually start fabricating the prototype. We had the expertise, and so what we did was we took these colorful ribbons and we wove the capacitive thread throughout the ribbons, and we hung um, these wooden balls at the base of the pendulums to give them weight, and to give them ability to swing. But one of the other goals of this installation was to bring light into the space. And so I'm quite lucky that I have this amazing piece of technology in my workshop that I work with, which is a spherical display. It's incredibly bright, um, and it's a kind of orb that could fit into that space and really bring a lot of light and color and movement to the space, to the dark and derelict space. So in order to make all of these elements come together, we had to utilize everyone's really varied skills in the team. We had about 10 people attending this workshop. So we had the designer and the um, fine arts people working on the pendulums, fabricating them, testing the capacitive input. But we also had the computing scientists who were taking that capacitive input and routing it through the sphere. So we had graphics that were going over the sphere during the installation, but then we also had a writer in our team, and the writer worked on staging a narrative that could draw people down into the, the, the area where the installation was, and could try to entice people to get down there and actually see what we had done. So the end of two days came really quite quickly, and it was time for deployment. We had to gather up all our stuff and bring it down to the space and see what we could do. So as you see, we kind of were halfway through our, our installation, we had the pendulums up, we bring the sphere there, and everything came together. We filled the space with different lights, with the sphere, with the pendulums. And the way the basic concept worked by the end was that we had the sphere at the center, surrounded by six different pendulums, kind of in a ring around the sphere. And what happened is when you touched one of the pendulums, it would activate music. So the whole installation acted almost as a kind of collaborative instrument. People could gather around at all different angles, grab the pendulums, swing the pendulums, and that would act as an instrument, which then was also represented in the graphics moving across the sphere. So different colors, each pendulum had a different color that it could flash across the sphere, so people as well controlled the visuals on the sphere. We were also interested in looking at the kind of idea of watching and surveillance, which is a key part of performance. People are going to watch you. So we also had a camera placed near the sphere, so if no one was interacting, you would see your own face reflected in the sphere. Try to entice people to come up and touch the pendulums. 
A nice affordance of the, the spherical display is that people can interact from all sides. And so we created a very social environment. People could look across the installation and see other people interacting, could shout across, could yell and have a conversation. The idea we could share this experience, it's not a one person thing. Everyone can crowd around and have a try. So I've got a video which shows kind of what the installation is like. So I think we achieved a lot over the span of two days. Bringing this group together, about 10 people from varied backgrounds, we were able to actually create that working prototype, get the concept together, reflect on the space, choose a deployment site, put it there, and actually invite people from the public to come and interact. I think, I feel really strongly, that technology can have a positive impact on public spaces. But I also think we need to critically reflect on the technology that we put there. We need to ensure that new technologies that we're putting in these spaces actually is improving the experience, lest we become every space like Times Square, where it's pushing in on you from every side. I don't think that's a very positive experience of technology. And I think digital art has a place in our future city spaces. So I would urge you, as you go around the city, <coughs> reflect critically on the technology that's there and look for opportunities to reappropriate re your public space. Thank you.